At the beginning of the film, the news was being broadcasted on television about the economic crisis in European countries and the weakening of the NATO alliance. At that time, the cooperation between the militant of North Korea and Russia controlled by ultranationalists threatened to attack the United States. Sometime after the declaration of war took place, an American Marine named Jed Eckert who had just returned from his duty in Iraq was watching his younger brother, Matt Eckert's rugby match. He was on a rugby team called Wolverine. Unfortunately, Matt's team severely lost the match. The supporters left the stadium with disappointment while Matt stayed silently for a moment when suddenly, a beautiful woman named Erica came to meet him. In another place, Jed who visited a bar suddenly met with a woman named Tony Walsh, a childhood friend of Jed and Matt. They met for the first time when both of their family went on camping together. Shortly after, Jed and Tony met Matt and Erica, who at that time happened to come to the bar. Not long after that, suddenly, all the electricity in the city went out, forcing them to leave the bar and went to their homes. In the morning, there was a commotion outside, accompanied by a terrible shaking that made all the things in the house fall. The ruckus woke Jed and Matt who suddenly panicked and get out of the house immediately. When they left the house, they witnessed several paratroopers accompanied by planes flying over their house, as if a war is about to happen in that place. Sure enough, it was an attack from the North Korean military. Seeing that incident, Jed and Matt rushed away from that place to meet his father who was at that time working at the police station in the city. On their way, they finally met their father who was also very worried about the safety of his children. They gathered and planned to leave the city because the situation there could no longer be overcome. Their runaway was not an easy task, more like a life-threatening situation. They had to pass the bombardment by North Korean troops who had successfully landed in the city. They accelerated their vehicle to break through the attacks, but in the end, one of the cars used by their father had to stop because there was a slight problem as a result of the never-ending attacks shooting at the car. Their father ordered Jed and Matt to leave the city to one of their family's cabin houses in the middle of the forest. Before they headed for that place, Matt asked Jed to go to the residential area to find Erica so they could take her with them. Unfortunately, when they arrived at Erica's residence, it turned out that North Korean troops had already taken control of the area and it was seen that Erica and several other Matt's friends had been taken captive by them under the command of Captain Cho. Knowing it was impossible to save them, they immediately left from there. In the end, they succeeded. They escaped from the pursuit of the soldiers and shortly after the incident, they arrived at a cabin belonging to their family. As soon as they arrived, they immediately prepared everything that would later be used to defend themselves when needed. At night, they heard the sound of a car approaching them. At first, they suspected that it was the North Korean invaders' car who were patrolling around the area. Jen immediately ordered Matt to put off the lights in the house so they could hide their presence in the dark. Turned out, it was Danny and Tony, Jed and Matt's friends. In the morning, a problem arose. Some people that Jed saved and brought had run away with their supplies for a few days. After the incident, Jed and Matt were forced to go to the city to find supplies and to see the condition around, which turned out to be fully controlled by North Korean troops. When they returned to the cabin house, suddenly they got the news that their place had been known by Captain Cho and his troops, which at that time was leaked by Peter, the person who betrayed them and ran with their supplies. Not only brought his troops to that place, but Captain Cho also brought Jed's father and Daryl's father, one of Jed's friends whom he saved and brought to the cabin. The intention was none other than to make Jed and his friends came out of hiding to surrender to the North Korean troops. Daryl's father, who was the mayor of the city, told them to get out of their hideout and surrender but Jed and the others refused and chose to hide. They didn't care about anything that Daryl's father told them because turned out, he had become one of North Korea's proponents in the country, but when it was Jed and Matt's father's turn to speak, he said otherwise. He told his sons to keep fighting for their freedom and not to give up on the war against the invaders from their homeland. Hearing those words from Jed and Matt's father, Captain Cho immediately took his gun and shot him right in front of his sons. Since their hideout was known by the Korean troops, they had to leave that place and always move in the forest so they don't get caught by North Korean soldiers who kept patrolling around the area. They also decided to form a rebel group that they called the Wolverine, the same name as the rugby team Matt and his friends used to play for. They then made a plan to launch an attack against the troops to knock them back from their homeland. With all the experience that Jed gained through his duty in Iraq, he trained everyone and formed units. They customed their equipment and equipped each with a different weapon. After everything was ready, they finally launched the attack. 
they first attacked the borderline post. Tony came as a decoy to divert the troops' attention. Their plan worked. As the troops were off guard, the other launched the attack and managed to kill the troops there. After that, they looted the all weapons they could find from there. That attack made their names rise and became fugitives for the North Korean troops. It's the Wolverine! Wait, honey out! Tuna! Turkey! Radio Free America. Who needs a cave? Oh. <laughs> a few days later, Matt went along to the city to monitor the situation there, but it seemed that he accidentally saw his girlfriend, Erica, who was being held by the North Korean troops in their camp. Seeing this, he rushed back to the hideout to tell his brother about it. However, Jed considered his action careless and could harm the whole group due to his selfishness. Matt, who was annoyed to hear his brother's words, was angry and left from there. He insisted to save Erica in the army's camp no matter what. The next day, Jed and the other members carry out their next attack plan. They installed explosives in every car that would be used by North Korean officials. While carrying that mission, Matt accidentally saw Erica, who at that time was brought there by the North Korean prison bus. The plan for the attack went awry instantly because of Matt's selfish action. Matt, who didn't want to lose his girlfriend, immediately ran towards the bus to save Erica. Thankfully, despite the chaos, he managed to save her and brought her back to the hideout. Unfortunately, when he arrived at the hideout, Jed informed him that one of their friends had died from the incident thanks to his selfishness. He was shot dead by the troops while trying to protect Matt. Hearing that, Matt couldn't say anything and just left the place in silence to mourn his mistakes. A few days later, they went back to the city to see the situation there. They also saw a woman about to be executed by the troops. The woman was suspected of helping the Wolverine. Attributes and guns were found in her shop indicating her involvement with the rebel group. Seeing that, the Wolverine tried to save her. When the woman was about to be shot, they immediately fired their weapons at the North Korean troops who were there and managed to help the woman. Because of this incident, American civilians screamed with joy because they found their hope out of the misery and that they could unite against North Korean troops to fight back and gain their freedom. Somewhere else, at the Korean Army headquarters, Captain Cho was scolded by the leader because he had failed his mission to gain the sympathy of the Americans. Turned out, many Americans had joined to become rebels with the Wolverine which made the current situation in the city uncontrollable. He was given the last chance to fix the problem caused by the Wolverine in the city. Meanwhile, in the middle of the forest, at the Wolverine's hideout, the group was resting because they were exhausted from the missions they had carried out. Suddenly, an attack was launched at them and made everyone panic and evacuated from there. After the attack subsided, they were forced to leave the hideout to find a new hideout, but in the middle of the journey, they were ambushed by three American ex-Marines. Coincidentally, the three soldiers were looking for them to ask for their help to carry out the operation the three soldiers were currently carrying out. The three of them then told the details of the operation, where they planned to steal a communication device used by North Korean troops. The North Koreans used a closed communication system that did not use a satellite to forward their communication signals and that was what made North Korea's military power unaffected by any cyber attacks. Hearing the explanation from the three soldiers, Matt then gave his cell phone to the soldier to match the scheme they had. It was true that the photo was similar to what they were looking for all this time. Long story short, Jed and the three soldiers planned an operation to steal the device which was located in one of the North Korean security centers in the city. They managed to enter the city and immediately rushed, looking for the item which was suspected to be in Captain Cho's room. Their plan didn't go that smoothly. In the middle of the mission, they got caught by the officers and the shootout couldn't be avoided. Smith, you're on. In the end, they managed to retrieve the item they were looking for and killed Captain Cho in the process, thanks to Jed.
They also managed to escape from the chase and hide somewhere to take a breath. Unfortunately, without them knowing, the North Korean troops were secretly following them. When Jed was walking towards Tony, a bullet passed through his head and instantly killed him. The North Korean troops bombarded them with bullets. They were forced to leave the place to save themselves and left Jed's dead body there. They continued driving to the pickup point that they and the three American soldiers had agreed on. One of the American troops asked the rest of the Wolverine to come with them to a safer place from the North Korean troops. Surprisingly, Matt said that he would fight against the North Korean troops to save the civilians who were trapped by the North Korean government in the city. As time flies by, the Wolverine managed to save many civilians and get them to join forces against the North Korean. They kept moving from one place to another to save other civilians who were being held captive by North Korean troops. The film ends with a montage of the Wolverines being remembered as heroes, a testament to their bravery and determination in the face of overwhelming odds. They became the symbol of bravery, freedom, and the defense of the country as a tribute to their sacrifice.